Joining the table now, former communications director for President George W. Bush, our good friend Nicole Wallace. Hello, Nicole. Good morning. Let's talk a little business here. Some news from California. The surge in children and families illegally entering the United States led to a heated standoff in California. Hundreds of protesters forced three buses of immigrant detainees to turn around from the U.S. Customs and Border Patrol station in Murrieta, California. The protesters blocked the entrance, waving American flags and carrying protest signs in opposition to, quote, new illegals. The move was designed to prevent overcrowding at border facilities near the Texas-Mexico border. Marietta Mayor Alan Long urged people unhappy with the decision to protest the transfer. More than 52,000 unaccompanied children have illegally entered the U.S. since last October. That leads us to this. President Obama doubling down on his promise to use executive orders to achieve results if Congress fails to act. He urged members of the cabinet to be creative in finding ways for him to use his executive authority. House Speaker John Boehner is vowing to sue the president for using executive actions to bypass Congress and ignoring laws of the land. But President Obama is not backing down. I'm going to keep on taking actions on my own that can help the middle class. And they criticize me for this. Boehner sued me for this. And I told him I, I'd rather do things with you, pass some laws. Middle class families can't wait for Republicans in Congress to do stuff. So sue me. I, 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 as long as they're doing nothing, I'm not going to apologize for trying to do something. President Obama also criticized Republicans for playing politics with his plans to build new highways and bridges, which he says could affect up to 700,000 jobs. People just want to see some results. And objectively, if you look at the agenda I'm putting forward, the things that we're trying to get done, like just fix some bridges and roads, it really shouldn't be controversial. It's not crazy. It's not socialism. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's not, you know, the imperial presidency or no laws are broken. Mark Alpern, this is a strange way for a country to conduct its legislative business. You have the House Speaker threatening to sue the President of the United States, the President then using executive authority, which, by the way, he's has used less than many of his predecessors. What do you make of what we're seeing here? There's a little bit unplugged there, and speaking from the heart, he's very frustrated. He wants the last couple of years of his presidency to not be made up of nothing, and he's got a responsibility to govern, and I think John Boehner and the others who are nitpicking at everything he tries to do recognize we need to fund construction projects, we need to deal with the immigration crisis, even if we can't have comprehensive immigration reform. And I think the president needs a, a slightly tweaked strategy uh, because I think he's right that some of these things would be better done working with Congress. I think he needs to figure out whether there's a way, even in the context of the midterms, to try to get some things done particularly transportation and, and infrastructure with Congress as opposed to just trying to work around them. John Meacham, we talked a little bit about this yesterday, but specifically with reference to immigration reform, uh, it's through the Senate. John Boehner says we're not going to pass that bill through the House. The president says, well, then I have to go around you. Uh, you've studied presidents over years and years and, and, and centuries, in fact. How unique is what the president is doing right now? Well, you, most presidents find great virtue in executive power once they're the executive. Uh, one person's imperial presidency is another person's attempt to make a recalcitrant Congress, uh, to go around a recalcitrant Congress to do good. And I think right now uh, the president's working in a tradition of FDR, uh, I think, put best when he said, try something, experiment, but, you know, if it fails, problems like the construction and, and I think immigration uh, you can see saw it in the California story is becoming increasingly emotional so Nicole President George W Bush wasn't afraid to use executive ash action uh, we know that this Congress has been recalcitrant uh, for some time as John points out so is the president within his authority to use the language that he's using and then also use the power of the pen 
Well, the language he's using is, uh, I agree with Mark, pretty unplugged and, and interesting for us to see him six years in speak like he's watching a whole lot of Fox News. Um, imperial presidency isn't a term you hear thrown around on this network or, or many other news channels. It's a term you hear on Fox News. So either he's listening to conservative talk radio or watching a little bit of Fox in his free time. What's interesting to me is how um, he seems to have these feelings in a vacuum as a victim, that he had no role in arriving at this place where he can't do anything with Congress. And whether or not the American people will buy that, I think, remains to be seen. My sense is he will spend the next two years speaking to a smaller and smaller slice of America, his base. They will be the people that will write checks to his library. They will be the people who will be the most invested in him having some success. On immigration, this has gone from being, you know, what I think at one point for a long time was the greatest legislative failure of both parties of Congress to the most grave humanitarian crisis in the country. We now have tens of thousands of children living in government detention centers. This is, you know, we, 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 we bring people on this show all the time. We talk about refugee crises on the Syrian border and other places. We have one in this country, and they're children. And uh, he is not to blame completely for the fact that we are where we are, but you certainly wish that we had leaders in both parties who could, who could go down to the border. I went down to the border with George W. Bush a dozen times and bring the focus of the country on the humanitarian tragedy of what's going on and, and try to lead our way out of this, whether it's executive action or some, some limited legislative action. But do you think that the president has a grasp on the humanitarian issue as opposed to John Boehner who is saying nothing's going to happen? It's not clear to me who has a, a grasp on the humanitarian crisis. I mean, there's certainly enough information out there, and, and, and um, Alex Wagner just did an incredible series. I mean, I, I have to assume that they all have a grasp on the humanitarian crisis, but the legislative process has failed. It's failed both parties. It's failed the president, and it's failed all the people who are on the border and the people who live on the border. So if you were the president, would you sign executive action on immigration reform? You know, he has to do whatever he has to do, but I think that he, lawyers can can create a rationale for executive action and if that's what he feels comfortable doing then that's what he'll do and I said yesterday that I think that the immigration crisis is an instant instance that is so urgent and so desperate that if you're going to strain your political credibility it's a good place to do it. Uh, hey Jean, uh, Nicole just mentioned uh, the, the phrase lead our way out of this whether it's immigration or whether it's the fact that the country is literally crumbling around us bridges falling down roads coming mm -hmm. apart uh, how difficult is it in terms of both history and the now that we seem to have a Republican Party, sorry Nicole, intent on not governing, not governing? Well, you know, Mike, I think the now is different from history. Um, it, it's, it's so different from um, the, the, George W. Bush, for example, had a completely different view of the immigration crisis uh, and, and than today's Republican Party does, and, and especially Republicans in Congress. I mean, it, uh, George W. Bush understood uh, in, in that sense, he certainly was a compassionate conservative, and he had a, he had a, had a, uh, a, a totally different mindset about it um, than the one today. And, and I can see why the president would be really frustrated because, you know, Congress doesn't want to do anything. I think Nicole is right. I think the president is going to have to act. It is a humanitarian crisis. I, I guess the, the only thing I would like to hear, um, you, you know, you spoke of leading our way out of it. I would like to, to also hear the, the plugged in version of the talk he gave yesterday about immigration specifically and you know look this is a humanitarian crisis and here's here's why we have to act and here's what I'm going to do if anybody doubts there is a crisis 52,000 minors without their parents have been caught at the Texas border just since the end of last year it's, it's, it's incredible what's happening it's horrific